Since I owned my imported Nissan Skyline last year, I've gotten more emails and tweets and Facebook messages with questions about importing and registering a car than any other topic. So today, since you're so interested, the temporary license plate on my imported Nissan S Cargo is about to expire. So I'm gonna show you what it's like to register an imported Japanese car at a DMV here in the United States. Now, registering an imported car in the United States is a notoriously difficult process, made worse by DMV employees who would simply rather not deal with some weird special case. So I am bracing for the worst, and I have come prepared. I've brought my title, my car insurance information, all the buyer's forms from the dealership where I got it, Japanese Classics in Richmond, Virginia. Here is a customs declaration, a Homeland Security Entry Summary form, an EPA form, and a Customs and Border Protection form for immediate entry to the United States. I also have my driver's license, my checkbook, my credit card, and I even brought my social security card. There is absolutely no way that they could possibly deny me registration for this vehicle today. Now, in addition to all that paperwork, the law is on my side. Once a car turns 25 years old and my S cargo is 26, it can be legally registered in the United States with no problems. Nonetheless, here are the problems I'm expecting to have. The car is not in their system. The VIN is not in their system. The VIN number is only nine digits long and it only has one letter in it, and I bet they're gonna complain about that. It's right-hand drive. They don't understand the model, the make, the type. I think there's gonna be some crazy weird problem that's gonna throw them off, and I really don't expect to leave with a license plate today. But I guess we'll see what happens. Now, unfortunately, I can't film what happened in the DMV, but here's basically what went down. I waited a little while, and they called my name, and I went up with all my paperwork, and initially there was no problem. And then we went outside to verify the VIN number, which you have to do if you're gonna register an out-of-state car in Pennsylvania. And then, as expected, the problem. Okay, so I'm standing in the DMV parking lot here. Uh, they, I thought there might be problems, and in fact there were. The first problem came up almost immediately. They went out to look and expect the VIN number to make sure that I had a real VIN and all that, and it wasn't on the base of the windshield, which it is on most American cars, so they freaked out and they called the state capitol and they were like, what do we do? And they came up with a solution. I have to come out here and using tracing paper, I have to trace the VIN, uh, which is on the frame of the car in, Jap in older Japanese cars, and then they're gonna send that to the state and hope that the state takes it. I'm doing it myself here, so here goes. Okay, so I finished my tracing of the VIN, and uh, now we'll see what the next snag is. Once we did the VIN tracing, things were actually pretty easy. In fact, the hardest part came when we had to decide whether this was a van, a truck, a hatchback, or a sedan. I made the argument that it was a van, two seats and a rear with cargo area. She said, does it deserve truck plates? I said, no, that would make it the sorriest truck in Pennsylvania. She laughed, and then she decided that it was a sedan. So this is my Nissan sedan that you're looking at right here. The other problem, because the VIN is only nine digits, it couldn't go through the state computer system. She had to write down all of my information on a big form to send to the state capitol. She also had to photocopy all of my information. The whole process took forever and it was dragging on and on and on and I was starting to get a little worried that it wasn't gonna work out and then I got a license plate. Sort of. You see, they were able to issue me a license plate, but they weren't able to issue me a registration. I was in the DMV for an hour and 15 minutes, and despite my brilliant tracing abilities, they still ran into a lot of problems. So they issued me a real license plate, but not a real registration. I gotta drive around with this temporary pink piece of paper until the DMV gets back to them and tells them that all of the things are okay, including the tracing, the VIN number, all that stuff. So we're not quite out of the woods yet, but I would say the license plate is a good sign, and it only took me an hour and 15 minutes and I didn't get any run around. They didn't tell me to come back or I didn't bring this or I didn't bring that. They were happy. I had all the paperwork and it actually was kind of a breeze. So for all of you out there asking how hard is it to register a Japanese car and I can't get mine registered. 
It wasn't that hard for me. And by the way, it's worth noting that one of the main reasons why the woman at the DMV said it wasn't such a complicated process is because I already had a Virginia title. It's one of the cool things about Japanese classics. They bring the cars in and they title them in Virginia. So instead of going there with a bunch of EPA and Homeland Security paperwork, I showed up with a Virginia title, already a title issued by a US state. And so Pennsylvania DMV was like, well, if Virginia titled it, we might as well title it too. And that cut down on a lot of the hassle. Needless to say, I'm really happy that I came in with a US title and I think buying one of these things with a title already makes the whole registration process a lot easier. So that's it. Despite all the worried emails you always send me about what is it like to register an imported car, the answer is it's not so bad. And as always, for more of what happened to me when I meant to register my S cargo at the DMV, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com oversteer.